Hey guys, um, and everyone watching the video. Um, I'm a new RB1 Odyssey owner. This isn't an absolute. This is just a run-of-the-mill K24 CVT absolute. And uh, like a lot of absolutes with the Internavi uh, inbuilt navigation system, I had problems with it. Um, before I bought it, the guy told me it flickered, but upon further inspection and me looking at it, it just was failing to boot. It would come up with the Internavi logo and then turn off. It would come up with the Internavi logo, then turn off. Sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't. Sometimes it would just stay black when you turn the vehicle on. Now, this is because, at least in my case, there's other problems like you can have with the screen and stuff, but way more common is you'll have problems with the, uh, if I can open this, I thought I knew how to open that, there we go. You'll have problems with the HDD, the hard drive. Um, so this is a hard drive that has your map data, um, your ripped songs, et cetera, et cetera, on there. Um, mine's an 04, so that thing's almost 20 years old. I guess it would be 20 years old. It's an old shitty IDE hard drive, which they haven't used since about that. If you think about it, the the Xbox 360, which came out in 2005, used a SATA drive, which is what they replaced IDE with. So this has an old beat shitty IDE hard drive in it, which is just pins instead of like a bunch of blade connectors on it. So these are problematic. I was trying to replace mine with a solid state drive, an M SATA drive in, a, in an enclosure. And while I was doing that, because I formatted it wrong, I found out that if you're... Internavi is giving you problems with the hard drive. It's making a lot of noise. It's not turning on properly. It's flickering. It's freezing. It's turning itself off. It's very easy to fix, at least in my case. I didn't even need to do my hard drive. So what you're going to have to do, you're going to get a T8 Torx screwdriver. Torx, so that's the star bit. Looks like the Star of David kind of. Uh, T8 size, so that's the size 8. It's small. You get these in a lot of security bit, um, a lot of, uh, security bit kits, etc., etc., um, you can get it uh, at electronic stores and their screwdriver kits. Even at Staples, I think you can get that. Maybe the source. That's where I got mine was the source. All you're gonna do, you're gonna take your uh, take your screwdriver, take these two screws out. Two screws. Take them all the way out. Well, not all the way out because they're captive screws, so they'll ne they'll never come out of this uh, door. They're going to stay in there all the time. You just take it till the door starts to move, as you can see that. Might have to fiddle with it because it's probably never been opened. It's kind of old. And then you got to, sometimes, depending on how stuck it is, like mine, you got to pry it off, jam it around a little bit. Eventually, it's going to pop off, just like that. Just push that down like that. Now, well, don't push it down like that. Take it, put it out of the way. There's a little flap here. You're going to take that. You can try pulling directly out, but it's probably going to be pretty stuck on there, especially if it's never been removed. So what you're going to do, you're going to pull to the side, to the side, to the side, alternate back and forth, back and forth, till it walks off those pins. And then this whole thing will pull out. Now, this is the drive I was trying to install as an upgrade. This is a um, IDE to MSATA enclosure. So there's a 120 gig MSATA um, solid state drive in there that I put in my enclosure for the Odyssey that I took off my old hard drive. But... Um, I'm still working out how to make this work, so ignore that, that'll be a later video. But you have to walk it because those pins are on there, right? And they'll get seized in there and you just wiggle it back and forth, it'll walk out of those pins, fair enough. So, the next important thing you have to do before you start it up is you have to put this back on because if you look in here, see that little micro switch there? That has to be contacted with this lid, otherwise the system just won't boot up, period. So, you put your lid, right there put your screws all the way back in there nice and tight it's on there good close it don't have to close it i like to close it turn it on no hard drive in this thing at all and clock comes on which didn't work before screen comes on which didn't work before It'll fully boot up, and that says in Japanese that it can't detect a hard drive. So this thing fully works with no hard drive as long as that lid is back on. Get audio, all your audio stuff works. I can go back to using my Bluetooth adapter. It doesn't flicker. The review camera works. Everything works. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to answer. Stay posted for other videos where I am just working out the kinks and getting this 128 gig drive to work so I can just load a ton of music onto it and not have to use my Bluetooth adapter. But yeah, don't need to replace this now. Everything works. It's that simple. It doesn't cost you a cent.